Hi everybody, the purpose of this video is to look at how we can use the Wolfram language to help us solve our matrix encryption project. Uh, if you haven't already watched the video on the Gauss-Jordan method for finding the inverse of a 3x3 matrix mod 29, please go back and watch that first because while we're going to use the computer to help us do the actual math, understanding what math you have to do is really important. So, um, Specifically, what we're going to do today is use the Wolfram language to invert that 3x3 key matrix so that we can use the inverted matrix to um, decrypt our ciphertext. So uh, I'm taking the same matrix here, the 20513796 matrix that is in the uh, previous video as an example, and we'll work with that. But you, of course, can use whichever key matrix has been assigned to you and follow the same steps. I would invite you to go to the Wolfram Lab online and uh, open up a notebook and sort of follow the steps along with me as you watch the video. And, um, you know, if you have any questions, kind of write them down so that you can ask me in class and uh, we'll go from there. So, like I said, we got this key matrix um, that we want to invert. And so um, one of the important ideas in programming and fundamental uh, concepts is this notion of a variable. And, and you've worked with variables for a long time in mathematics, and it's the same sort of idea. Um, but in this first line here that you see, we're going to assign to the variable named key the matrix in question. Now, the way that we have to specify that is, is um, particular for this particular language uh, and each language has its own syntax and grammar in the way that it works. So uh, any variable in the Wolfram language has to be lowercase, start with a lowercase value uh, letter. So key here is lowercase. And then to uh, type in a matrix, we have to use curly braces. And so we enclose the entire matrix in curly braces. And then within that enclosure, we enclose each row in curly braces. And so every element within the row is separated by commas every row itself is also separated by commas. And so what you see here in this key equals line is the matrix that, um, or at least represents the matrix that we see here in an actual matrix form. So, uh, you know, you go ahead and you can type that in um, to execute that or to make it the case that, that that runs and the key is actually assigned that value. You have to hold down shift and press enter. And when you do that, uh, you see you know, this was an input line and this is an output line. And so it's outputting um, the expression that has been assigned to key. Now, uh, you know, usually, usually we're used to kind of variables being equal to numbers or something like that. But in Mathematica or in Wolfram language, you know, we can have them be assigned to entire matrices as we see here. I won't read this to you. I'm sure you can read that on your own. And this is available as a document on blended schools. So I'm just going to keep skipping down and going through the steps and... Um, you know, talking about uh, the, the particular steps and how they work. So once we've assigned this key matrix, you know, we can do all kinds of math to it. We can multiply, we can um, do a variety of different things. Uh, and um, one of the things we want to do to it is turn it somehow into um, an augmented matrix that contains uh, the identity uh, and so, so that that's representing this kind of equation here. And we talked about this in class a little bit, right? We've got this matrix, the key. We know that the, the key times its inverse is going to be the identity matrix. And so um, the way we can kind of represent this entire equation as a matrix itself is, as, as I said, an augmented matrix, right? Um, in the video, there would be like a line through the center here, that line sort of represents the equal sign, right? And it's not the case that um, the left-hand side of this matrix equals the right-hand side. That's obviously not true. But um, this left-hand side times something, times its inverse, will equal the right-hand side. And so our job is to figure out that inverse. Um, the way that we go about that is to perform these Gauss-Jordan elimination steps uh, to get zeros in all but the main diagonal elements. And uh, we'll do that one at a time in the way we solve linear systems um, last unit. So, for instance, if we want to get rid of this 9 and make it 0, well, we know how to do that. We would make row 3 itself minus 9 row 2s. Okay? And um, we talked in class about how that might be done as a matrix multiplication. We've got our key. 
if we multiply our key by this matrix, well, this matrix preserves the first row, preserves the second row, and makes the third row negative 9 row 2s plus 1 row 3, and um, that will create for us a, a 0 in that bottom corner position. Uh, and so if we're doing that with our augmented matrix, you know, this equation, if we're representing that operation in our augmented matrix, it would look like this. That transformation matrix times our augmented matrix. Okay, uh, so let's actually do that using the computer, see how that's done, and um, continue from there. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to create another variable to hold the augmented matrix. Now, uh, I called it augmented. You could call it whatever you want. You could call it A. You can call it anything, as long as you're using a lowercase letter to start. So I'm saying augmented equals curly braces, curly braces enclosing the entire matrix. And then my rows now are not um, three elements long, but they're six elements long. And I've enclosed each row in curly braces. Okay. Once again, I'll hit shift enter to execute that line. And I can see that that happened. And now any time that I use the word augmented, I will be referring to that, that matrix. Uh, now, this doesn't look like a matrix, right? This is actually a list of lists, but we can tell Mathematica or the Wolfram language here to interpret that list of lists as a matrix. And so if you want to actually see each step um, as you go, what it looks like as a matrix, because this is kind of an unfamiliar format, um, what you can do is turn that into matrix form. So this matrix form, notice it begins with a capital M. That means it's a function. So in the Wolfram language, commands that are available to you are always going to begin with a capital letter. So matrix form, and then I have this percent sign. Percent sign just means the last output. So uh, I'm going to turn into matrix form the last output. The last output was this, okay? And so if I execute this line, it will show me the last output as, uh, as a matrix, right? Alternatively, I could have not used the percent sign. I could have used augmented itself, um, since that's a variable I've defined. And if I hit shift enter there, it's going to give me the exact same thing. Okay. Keep in mind what I just did. I uh, called matrix form. I called this function, uh, and on the argument uh, augmented this matrix, and it gave me a result. It did not change the variable augmented into a matrix form. Right? It just showed me what the matrix form of augmented would be. If I want to see what augmented is, uh, let's not do that. Um, yeah. If I want to see what augmented is, can I shift enter on that? It is still this list of lists. Okay? So we haven't modified augmented in any way. Okay, so now what I want to do is actually perform the multiplication that you see here. Well, how do we do that? We have to represent both the augmented matrix and this matrix in the Wolfram language. And so we need to create a second matrix here um, <clears throat> for this uh, transformation matrix, right? Now, I didn't give that a variable name. You could if you wanted to, um, but I can just express it directly in the curly braces. And the way that we perform multiplication is the period, it's dot, right? So dot kind of like dot product. Um, Actually, when we deal with vectors, it's the same operation. So this matrix dot the augmented matrix. And that will actually do this multiplication for us. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, shift enter that again to execute that line. It produces, again, a list of lists. If I wanted to see what that looks like as a matrix, I can matrix form that output, the percent sign, and there it is, right? So now, great, I've got a zero in the bottom uh, left corner and I can continue this process right now here's the thing again though I've done this multiplication I have not changed augmented in any way it is still the original augmented matrix with this last row of the 946 so if I want to kind of keep track of my changes and um, progress here as I've done my um, multiplications I can reassign augmented to be the product that I just listed here, right? So if I want to maybe, you know, cut and paste this, copy and paste it, um, I can say augmented equals that multiplication. And now augmented will be holding my new augmented matrix with, with the zero in the bottom left corner. Okay. Um, the next step is to get a zero in the, uh, 
second row and the first element in the second row here, where the one is, and we know how to do that, right? Because we've done that before. Row two would be itself minus, um, excuse me, two of itself, I don't know why, two, of, two row twos minus a row one. Uh, and so, um, don't know why that made a mistake there. So two row twos minus a row one. And so um, that would then get us the next step, right? So that would look like this. You know, if I wanted to do that step, I could say augmented equals, again, curly brace, um, one comma zero comma zero, negative one comma two comma zero, and zero comma zero comma one, dot augmented, now keep in mind augmented is now the already multiplied from the first step matrix. Shift enter. Okay, uh, I can look at that as matrix form if I want to. And I can see I have two zeros, right? Um, here and here. Okay, I can continue that process. And again, watch the uh, other video to see that. I'm not going to do all of them at this step, but um, that is how we would sort of continue to um, change this matrix. And if I did that, eventually I would end up with this matrix, okay, where I have zeros in all but the main diagonal elements. And I've got uh, over here this matrix. So we're in good shape. Now I need to actually get this down to the identity, right? So I need to get rid of the 27, the 45, and the 135 by multiplying by their respective inverses in the mod 29 number system. And so that's the next step. So um, watch that video next.